Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training where we want to give you, the YouTube audience, the training that you need to tackle projects like this one on your own. The project that we're going to work on right now is going to be a waterfall table where you're going to do a laminate waterfall table. So here's the laminate that we're going to be working with. Uh, um, it's called like a silver slate gray or something like that. I'll leave a link for it in the description. And uh, so we got a sheet of this stuff and we're going to do a, a waterfall table and do the whole thing uh, with this uh, laminate. I got the mock-up right here, so let me show you the, uh, the project. Okay, so this is just a small, like, miniature waterfall table. Now, on my particular table, uh, I, I built this out of uh, three-quarter inch MDF, medium density fiberboard. I sandwiched two pieces together here, so you have an inch and a half reveal all the all the way around. I did a drop edge right there. You can see where I state I uh, I glued and stapled that joint so that this is uh, how I constructed that. This is a two by three that I put and attached it with a couple of screws on each side for stability to give the uh, the table stability. Now this is just a small um, a small table where it's uh, 24 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. But um, if you like the project, you could make the dimensions of whatever size waterfall table you want. Um, the only thing that you might want to do differently is how you get strength over here. You could do a, some type of an angle bracket or something different. But for my mock-up table, I just ended up using uh, just this 2 by 3 Now, I've already got several pieces cut. I got the easy ones cut. I got the top piece right there, that's one of the side pieces right here, and this one right here is another one of the side pieces. Those were all easy cuts. Now, I, what I did was, is I cut some, some slits here because I was trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to do this interface right here. Let me okay, so one of the ways that I could do this is that I could take this piece here and glue this down uh, straight as long as this was a straight edge. This particular piece is not a straight edge. And, and by the way, I don't have what's called a slitter, which is a tool that cost about 150 bucks, which when you have full sheets of laminate that you can slit it in and you can adjust how much you want. That would be the proper tool to have if I didn't mind having a seam exactly where I'm showing you. So let me show you that again. So when you're looking at the work like this, I could theoretically do this, put this flush to there, come out here, laminate, uh, uh, glue this together. I can trim out my edges here and I would have one seam right there. Now. I got some extra uh, laminate that the piece is sitting on. So, so we have so much extra laminate from our project that what we could do is we, on our, in this particular example, we don't technically need a seam. We can cut out the, the, the laminate, uh, oversize it, and then glue these edge pieces on without a seam. So, so we can do that. But let's now uh, look at all the pieces that we have, okay? So I've got my, my edge pieces here. We're going to be able to cut the, um, mark this sheet of laminate here and then cut it for, for the edge pieces here. But now we have one more piece to take care of. And that's this inside piece here. So I actually want to start with this. And what I'm going to need is I'm going to need a piece kind of like this where I can um, have it uh, oversized so I can, uh, I can router out my edge o over right here. And then when I come up here, I can uh, straight uh, mark that, cut that, and then slide that in like this. And then have this whole thing. So when you're looking at it on a side profile, uh, like this here, and you can see inside here, what you're going to see is you're going to see you're going to see the laminate in there. So um, 
So I've got to do a little bit of measuring to get this set up and then we'll do some cuts and then we'll do some, uh, some gluing. Uh, the first piece that we're going to glue on this project is going to be this piece here. So we have to, we have to actually cut that out. By the way, here's some other sample pieces that I made. Here's a um, piece of uh, three-quarter inch MDF with a uh, three-quarter inch uh, overhang. So it's a one and a half inch reveal coming down here. So you can check out my channel. I'll see if I can leave you some links on how I uh, built these. But these are easy compared to the project we're working on now, the waterfall project. This one here is uh, a similar sample, but instead, it having a flat edge like like this right here it's going to have this which is a bull nose so I actually need to buy some more stuff to uh, finish this project out but that's going to look quite pretty we're also going to we're also doing uh, this table here in laminate uh, the same laminate that you see right here the slate by the way this is a uh, an epoxy tabletop that I made so this is made with epoxy not for mica laminate, although it looks kind of similar. It's uh, not though. It's uh, it's made with epoxy. You can check out my channel on this. Same thing with MDF with uh, with a one and a half inch overhang this way here. Anyways, that's what that project there looks like. All right, so I have my piece marked out, and let me show you exactly how I did it. I know that this is a factory edge, and I labeled it factory there and factory there. So this straight cut is what I intend on having up here in the piece. It's going to be turned around and put up there with a little bit of overhang so this way I can uh, trim out the the edges on that no problem. Now um, I do need to cut this piece here so this way it will fit uh, for one side of the edge piece so this way I can do uh, one of the edges without a seam. So technically what I could do is that if this table was against something I could do one side like you know flat and one side with seams like that and just to save on material I might end up actually doing that because this way what I can do is I can cut this piece right here and have all this as leftover otherwise I have to take another one of these trace it over here and then and then do that over here so you don't have the seams but just since this is just a sample piece, uh, I'm not sure what way I'm going to go yet because I don't really have a use for this table unless it's some... I have no idea what I'm going to use this table for. I'm really just doing it just to get practice working with laminate. So I can, you can see that I've got, anyways, a little bit of an overhang here and I've, um, and I've got it marked out so that this will work for one of the pieces here and I've got this huge piece here that I can cut uh, to put inside one of the other side. All right, I've decided to uh, cut the other piece as well, so uh, we're going to do a full edge on both sides. I go, I'm going to do my cuts with a uh, jigsaw, and I've got a uh, fine tooth blade on here for the uh, for the cutting. So I'm just going to get right to it and start cutting. That. Uh, technique is producing tearing and I don't like it so I am uh, not going to continue on with that I started getting a tear right there and I know I have some leeway but I don't have all the leeway in the world uh, for this type of activity so I'm going to uh, switch gears I'm going to change over to a circular saw here's the circular saw that I'm going to use you can see the blade isn't anything really special but I did protect the uh, the base plate here with um, some masking tape so it won't scratch the laminate All right, so before I started this project, I ordered a whole bunch of samples. I got, you can see, I got a thousand sample pieces right here. So 
what I did was is I took one of my sample pieces here and I mimic the exact same cut that I want to make on my good piece of uh, gray slate that I want for the project. What we'll do is we'll do a test cut with this to see how well we do and how well it works before we start cutting our good stuff. I did mess up a little bit. If you saw right there, I did a, uh, a nick there. Let's see what this is going to look like. Okay, I could even go in deeper, well, on this sample piece only because the sample piece is, is less than my, than my inch, and a, uh, inch and a half overhang. This piece here is going to be over that. So, um, all in all, that's a pretty tight fit. That's not bad. This is, uh, is going to work as long as I watch myself. Even if I make a chip, it'll be up there. We are going to move forward with this piece. If this piece works out good and, it's, and we'll match it to the other side, we'll do a template and cut the other side just like it. Okay, here it is. So there's my piece. Here it is that I cut. And it's going to be resting against here and here. I'm going to be trimming this section here out uh, with, the, with the router when I get to it. Now, yes. And um, anyways, there's a little bit of a reveal here. But I've got this uh, paint here, which is this color, it's kind of a dark color. It's not gray. Gray would be ideal. But I think that, uh, uh, that if I paint in here and paint this rail up with this color here and paint this section here and maybe this uh, back of this uh, portion right here, it'll, it'll look really good. So anyways, uh, uh, that's going to be the game plan. This is a good template. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, uh, get the other uh, piece that's over there, mark it out, and then cut it. Okay, in order for me to make the second piece of this, I, I'm planning on using this inside cutout with this factory edge for that second piece. So what I did was is I put this down, made sure I had overhang all the way around, used my, uh, my black sharpie here, and you can see that I already uh, marked everything so this way it's, it's uh, good to go. I'll make these two cuts with the table saw and then I'll have to do this one with the circular saw because I'm inside to inside. So let's get to it. All my pieces are ready to move forward. I told you I wanted to start on the inside right there. I got my two pieces ready to go. Before I put them into place, I want to paint. So I've got my paint ready, my paintbrush and everything. Okay, we're back. I got two coats of paint on here. Here's my piece doing a dry fit um, coming, in, coming in like this and you'll see that um, it's going to look pretty good with, with the dark color against this uh, gray background so you won't notice the, uh, the edge profiling here that much. Uh, you, know, you know, the table is going to be uh, the way the table is going to sit like this, you're really not going to notice it at, at, at all. Make sure that you can see all that. Yeah. So, um, so now I got to figure out. Um, I don't want to just put my glue down and, and glue this thing down. 
because I got to think about how I'm going to make my cuts. Okay, so I got my router here, and I've I got uh, a, a bearing flush trim bit on here. I could use this non-bearing one, but I'm going to use this bearing one for this particular uh, jar. So just with uh, without turning the router on and just seeing how well my cuts are, I'm going to come into a roadblock uh, right right here where it's going to be able to get about three and a half inches from this joint here. I measured it with my tape measure. But I, I can get all the way around the rest of this job uh, with the, the router. Again, with the same thing, three and a half inches on the opposite side. So let me show you how I am going to take care of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some wood underneath here put this up like this here okay take my piece and I'm going to put it in exactly where I want it where it's centered to my to my um, two by three that's over here then I've got some clamps here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp this piece down like this there and then over here like this okay I only need three clamps then I'm going to take a black sharpie and I've got two sharpies here but I want to show you an example of what it is that I'm talking about this is the sharpie that I'm going to use you see that nice chisel point right there that's the one that we're going to use this is the sharpie that I use for a lot of my projects and you can see how it's kind of a, a very dulled out sharpie. So I'm going to bring this to the edge and I'm going to mark it with the sharpie right now, with the with the with the fine point sharpie right now. Okay, so now you can see the piece here. Now I know I need three and a half inches, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this out at four inches. Okay, now we're going to go and take this over to the table saw and we're going to go ahead and cut it. But the problem with the table saw is that normally when you use a table saw, you want to cut it with the good side facing up, unlike a circular saw where you want to cut it with the good side facing down. So what I think I might do, just to give myself a little extra protection from chip out on this side, is I'm just going to take some, uh, some masking tape here and just put that in like this so it'll help chip out on this side. So let's try this and I think that we will have favorable results with this technique. We only have to go in just four inches and we'll see how well this looks. So I'm going to get the table saw set up and go to it. Alright, here's our piece. Let's see how well that looks.
and I think that is going to look really good. I can file down or sand down that little bit that's remaining. So I think we have a complete winner here for this piece right here. And just so I don't get confused with my two pieces, because I've got two of these, I labeled this one here as side A and I did a matching side A here. Obviously this one will be side B for the suck, this, this piece here, just in case there's slightly different offsets. So this strategy I think is a, is a complete winner for us to move forward uh, with this uh, project. What I'd like to do is I'd like to do both of them simultaneously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take piece A, put that one aside, flip this over, and do the same thing now with uh, piece B, and uh, and and just match and just do the exact same thing where I kind of uh, mark it and cut it and everything. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, here's piece B and it is looking real good for this piece to, to fit in. So we're going to go ahead and start uh, getting these ready to glue down. I'm just going to give it one last sanding job just to make sure everything's nice and clean. So I'll do both, uh, both sides uh, sanding them down and then we're going to prep and get the glue on here. Alright, we're going to put our glue down right now, and I'm going to do two coats. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the glue on right now, and then I'm going to wait about 30 minutes, and then I'm going to give this a second coat, and then give the Formica laminate uh, one coat. Uh, and I think that we'll be okay with that amount of glue. All right, I'm going to set my timer now to wait about 20 minutes before we put the second coat on so we can uh, then apply the laminate. Okay, it has been 20 minutes and it's um, a little tacky, not bad, but there's no glue residue left on your fingers. By the way, I forgot to tell you what glue that I was using for the project and it is uh, weld uh, wood, the, um, the original uh, contact cement. So this is a solvent based contact cement but I just put it in here so that's way it's easy for me to uh, work with it seal it and I can keep my little uh, my little roller in here which is just a small little nap roller uh, for the project so that's how I work with that now let's put this aside we want to get another coat on here and we um, and by the way if you see how it's kind of blotchy on the uh, wood I'll give you a little close-up on that in case you can't see it but the reason why that has a blotchy appearance to it is because it's bare wood as opposed to the painted stuff over here. So what's happening is, is the wood is absorbing the glue more rapidly. That's why on this bare wood product I want to put two coats in an effort to uh, give me the best adhesion possible. So we are going to go ahead and give it another uh, coat right now. Okay, so I got all my pieces prepped, ready to go, both sides, so I can lay those in. I set my timer for 23 minutes, because with this temperature, it's going to take about this long uh, in order to set up the way I want it to. So, that's the project, and we'll come back to you in about 25 minutes. Okay, it's been about 25 minutes. We want to, right now, the piece is just maybe a little tacky. There's no glue residue that is coming on my hand. So we're fine to start putting these two pieces together and to bond the two pieces together. So I'm just going to put some stuff out of my way here. I got my J-roller. I got piece A and that matches piece A right here. Now what we want to do is we uh, want, I want to make sure I have everything lined up before I, I pull it out. So I'm just going to take my speed square Put it in like this just for now. 
I'm going to take piece A and get that buttoned up and make sure that this is lined up uh, pushing it against the edges here and making sure I'm just right. <clears throat> and that actually looks really good. I am going to go ahead and bond that together. I'm going to pull out my speed square and I'm going to put that down. Now, I don't want to roll right over the edge here, so I'm just going to take my, my black sharpie and just determine where the uh, where the end pieces are here and just make sure I roll inside of it here. So I don't want to do a big roll. I'm just going to do a little roll for right now. See that how how this is really bonded really nice to that even with some pressure on there like that so this is this is a good bond all right so I j-rollered this side twice I'm just gonna j-roller this side here one more time okay with that we are ready to go ahead and start using the router to go ahead and route this out and get this just right. Now we can use our file. I've got several files here in which we can uh, file down the, the finish edge. Okay, I got my workpiece ready to go, router ready to go. I got the piece clamped down so it's not going to move on me to my temporary workbench. Let's get right to this routering. Okay, now that we are routered out here, what I'm going to do is I've got a block of uh, sanding, uh, just a 2x3 with some 80 grit paper here. And I know that this was really rough, especially right here in this section. So I'm just going to go ahead and sand that now. So here's a close-up of what those edge profiles look like and I'm telling you these look really good. So I'm basically, I did those two sides right there with the sanding and filing. I'm just going to continue this one and then do the same thing on those three sides there and then those two pieces will be completed and then we can move on to the next portion of the project which in this case I think I'm going to do the edge banding uh, next. Alright, all of our inside pieces here are all finished, flush, perfect, both inside pieces. We have our edge pieces here that I want to put on. Both edge pieces are good to go with overhang all the way around so we don't have an issue with worrying about the uh, the overhang. So I'm just going to put that aside. Now I want to get some glue on here but this is all rough uh, brand new wood so it's going to absorb that wood a lot so I'm going to end up doing two coats of the glue so I want to go ahead and get the glue on right now. Okay here's our first piece. I'm going to make sure that we've got good overhang all the way around. Come up Make sure we're totally good and I've got good overlap 
everywhere I need it to be. It's not a very big piece, so I'm not even going to use the um, like uh, sticks or anything. I have a J roller right here. We're going to go ahead and roll that out, making sure I don't go too far over when I get close to the ends. Go this way to prevent it from to prevent me from cracking the formica. Because if you try to roll with a big lip here, you'll crack your formica. So we're going to make sure that we do not do that. Come down here and really bond this in. Now going this way. That's what I was trying to prevent. Well, I hope I didn't kill that. That was the problem. If you saw what I did right there, hold on. All right, so while I was J-rollering it, I came out too far and I pushed down because I'm putting, I'm trying to put pressure on this project. But in that, in that same instance, I came out so far that I, I broke my laminate. So that's totally broken right now but it's right here at the base it looks like I'm gonna be okay but uh, still that I did not I, I want to route this edge I don't want it to break the way that you I just demonstrated that was an accident but I think I'm gonna get I think I'm gonna be able to get away with it but I don't recommend that anybody does that particular accident that I just did okay we're J rollered on both sides really really good let's start routering all right, so here's the router that we're going to use, which is a, a Ryobi uh, full-size router. And here's a bit which is basically just a flush trim bit with a bearing. I'll leave a link for everything. But, I don't know if you can see this, but I've got some glue residue from, from my jobs that I was doing in, the, in, the, in the, the past here. So I want to clean that off. So that same paper towel that I had with the um, trying to get the glue residue off of the laminate surface. I'm going to go ahead and clean up my bit because I don't want any glue residue to be on this um, before I start my my routering. So I'm just going to make sure that I have a nice clean bit. Everything came out pretty good, except, which is a big except, I actually, the, the router bit chewed into this piece of laminate right here, and that took off some of the, some of the edging on me. So this is just a sample piece for me, but if this had been a, you know, production, a production piece, let me tell you how, oh boy, how upset I'd be. So this side over here came out perfect uh, when you look at this side here there's absolutely no chafing now when I was doing the the router on this section I was pushing it away from me and then I came across and I was pulling it towards me now, I don't know if pulling it towards me is why it did that it it sure produced a real I mean the edge is so fine here that like as as you know you, as you can see but we don't want our final product looking like this there is uh, possibly a small amount of lippage here see how that's hitting there so my putty knife kinda uh, just shows you how very very you know uh, 164th of an inch of an overhang here 
uh, but there's but it doesn't take the laminate off which is the the part you're trying to protect and over here it did so uh, we still have to do the other side so we have a couple of choices here I have another bit that we could use uh, that m possibly may work better than this one did um, for this inside piece here um, and that may be <coughs> where we start off with or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some use the same bit that I have here but I'm gonna put tape uh, along this edge here to to keep to, to whatever the thickness of the tape is to step that out a little bit to prevent that from happening because I don't want that that looks that's not the look I'm going for this over here is the look that I am going for okay try to show you to you in the sun and in the shade so hopefully through one of these exposures you're gonna see it but um, but that's disappointing that to me is not right that's an error and yikes and that was on a difficult piece this inside piece here let me tell you that is not a fun piece to make up so if I was to take this piece out and start over again on this piece uh, I'm gonna have to get my putty knife in here and rip this out it's not something I really want to do okay this is the bit that we used for the project right here flush trim with the bearing we're gonna use this flush trim bit but it has no bearing so uh, this is the one that we're going to use now which is just the flush trim bit and this is the one that was used uh, for the first side a uh, bearing flush trim bit okay both of these are made for laminate but um, let's see if we can get a better result with this now what I've got so I've got the piece flipped over so we're ready to to do it I'll put the bit right here inside the router I'm going to use some some Vaseline here to put on the inside edge of this piece and on this piece here so this way when the router bit is uh, is uh, is resting against this piece here it'll glide a little bit smoother because of the uh, the Vaseline and it, and it has less of a chance of burning that's one of the reasons why you use the bearing because it because it's riding on a bearing it doesn't have a chance of burning through the uh, the uh, project your material um, I don't need to put Vaseline here because it's just wood it's and this is all going to be covered and buried anyways so let's let me put this bit in get it get the router set up and we'll see how well and then what I'll do is I'll do these two cuts first um, before this gets uh, any gummed up with any contact cement or residue. I've already got this bit nice and clean so it should cut really well. Alright, there you go. It looks really really good. It did not chafe that piece. So this bit is working better much better because it did not chafe that piece there so we are that looks that's a nice clean that's a nice clean uh, cut right there okay so I'm just gonna double check my bit uh, make sure there's no contact adhesive on here there's a little bit I'll just clean it up one one more time All right, the piece came out really good uh, with what the work we've done so far. I'm just gonna take some paint thinner and a uh, paper towel here, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean off all the, uh, the glue edges and uh, Vaseline and stuff like that that I had all the way around, just to make sure that the piece is uh, uh, good. And then we'll file it down, and then and then we're, we should be good. So Okay, here's what the piece looks like so far, and it came out pretty good. This is the side where I used the non-bearing uh, flush trim bit here and here. The And I inspected it real close, and I got one chip out. It's just above my fingernail. 
Oh, baby. It's very small. I can see it in person because I'm, in, I'm inspecting the piece. But if you were just a casual viewer from this distance, you can't see it. Now, let's flip the piece over. Here's the other side that has the bearing flush trim bit. This side came out okay. This side over here, obvious, obvious where the bearing tore in, uh, not the bearing, but the router uh, tore into that piece of Formica. This is just a sample piece for myself. It's not, I'm not selling this to a client or anything, but if I was, this would be uh, unacceptable. No way would that pass. This piece would have to come out and be uh, redone. Um, which would be a major setback to the project. So, All right, I decided I'm going to pull this uh, piece of laminate off because I want to redo it because of that chafing right there. So let's get to it right now. Okay, I am ready to use this piece here to correct this piece here where I made the mistake, okay? So I have a nice straight edge going right here. I'm going to use this. Okay, because I want this to be exact, the way that we're going to do it is with our framing square. Now we're going to use our utility knife and we're going to score this down several times. Just perfect. All right, we have both of these edges done, but they still have to be sanded down with the block. But while I have everything taped up, it's a perfect time to do this, this section right here. This one will not be a problem because right here I'll be able to router it out. So I, don't, I can wait on this cut. That's not critical. So what I'm going to do is take my putty knife here. Okay, now we want to do a test fit to see how well we're going to fit inside here. <laughs> that is not bad. There's a little bit of glue residue over here, but this is not bad at all. I can glue this in and I can router out this section right here very easy with my router and we'll be fine. So we are good to go to glue this. Okay it has been 10 minutes and it's ready to go on both sides. So we are going to go to town right now. We got our J roller here. We got our piece right here. Now I got to get this in just right that I'm perfect all the way around and that this piece goes in the way I intend it to go in. Okay. There we go. Look at that, baby. We got it. Now, I don't want to go over an over roll here, so I don't want my roller to go over that mark, <clears throat> but we're going to go ahead and roll this out. All right, I don't want any chip out on this side and on the other side, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scotch tape my masking tape, I should say, 
and I'm going to put that right there and make just to try to keep that joint as uh, resilient as possible. Same thing on the other side. Just because I don't want the bit to give me any chip out when it goes across. All right, there you go. You tell me, was it was it beneficial to take the extra time and cut that other piece and remove this piece here and put this piece in? I say yes, absolutely. It was worth the energy and the effort to do so, and I think that the final piece came out good. Let me give you a side profile so you can see the edge and how the edge profile worked out. Let me give you an in nice and tight on that so you can see how that looks. Uh, I got a little bit of debris there. Let me just clean that up so you have it nice and perfect. But I think this is a home run. This was absolutely worth it. That looks like a burnish, but that's just part of the laminate. That is not that is not a burnish. Uh, and then here's the other side. Now the original piece was tighter. He, right there, I can see a little bit of a gap. But it's not that noticeable. It is kind of noticeable. I don't know if I can I don't know if I can J roll or that in any better. I don't there is if I had a little bit of gray sealant I'd, or something I could put in there, but I'm not even sure if I'm going to mess around with that. Uh, and that's just, that's doing a zoom in. Here it is, looking at it the way most people are going to view this product. This table is meant to go like this, okay? So here is what your table looks like. Let's see if I can get you better lighting. Okay, so here's from the outside looking in towards the garage this way. Hopefully the lighting is a angle is a the exposure is better is what I should say. But uh, there's your uh, edge piece right there. And let's see here. It was actually on side A. I'm sorry. This is side A. Okay. Now is that noticeable? very mild if it is anything. It's certainly less noticeable or less of an evil than what the other one was. Let me show you the other side by flipping it here. There it is right there and that's a home run. That is an absolute home run. That is no one's going to pick that up. I'm the installer. I know the mistake that I made but the average person isn't, I don't even, there's no way going to catch that. No way. All right, our waterfall table is coming out quite nicely. We have our inside pieces are done. This is all good there. I got a little bit of glue. I might have to clean up. The edge pieces are, are in on both sides, uh, back and forth. And before I move on, I'm just going to. Um, take my uh, sandpaper here and make sure that we are good on our uh, joints here like this.
Okay, our piece is, is all sanded down here, here on the top. I got everything blown down, wiped down. I got the two pieces that are going to go in the two end panels here and on the other side ready to go. This here is fresh wood. It's going to need two coats. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting my first coat on right now. Okay, it's been 10 minutes. We're dry. I'm going to go ahead and put on the second coat right now. You can see I got my piece clamped down so it's nice and sturdy and make sure I got good overhang all the way around and I'm just gonna come up here and we're good. Okay, now that our corners are protected, I'm going to take some Vaseline and put it on the Formica to protect this edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and lubricate this side here anywhere where there's where it's going to be running where there's Formica. Here it's not not critical, but here it is critical. Okay, I've got the piece clamped down, the router bit is clean, and everything's ready to go, so we're going to start routering this piece right now. Okay, now for the e easiest part of this whole project is putting the top on. I've got the top piece all cut, ready to go right there, but I want to put two coats of the contact cement on here now, so I'm going to put one coat on now, wait 10 minutes, and then put the second coat. Okay, it has been five minutes. While I was waiting, I taped up the uh, corners, so when we router this out, the edges will have less chance of chipping. The uh, the adhesive is tacky, but there's no residue on my fingers. So we're going to go ahead and land the uh, strip right now. Now what I'm going to do to make sure I've got this in the proper place is I'm going to take these extra strips that I w did not use for the project, put them on top to make sure that we get lined up just perfect before we actually adhere. Okay, here's our piece. And just get it close to what I want. Make sure I got overhang going everywhere before we start pulling the strips out. So we got overhang everywhere. We're looking real, real, real good all the way around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to pull this one out. And then I'm just going to touch that there and Pull that one out. Pull that out. There we go. Okay. So our top is in place. We have to J-roller it down. So what we're going to do to make sure we don't go over our edges like we've been practicing with all the other ones.
Okay, we're J-roller down, our ends are taped, and we're just about ready to uh, start routering the project. I'm going to take some Vaseline, and I'm going to go around the entire project and put the Vaseline right here. Okay, all the glue residue is reasonably cleaned up. Now, there's a little bit of lippage here. Not bad, but we want to take a file. And we'll use this one. Well, here you go. This is the first waterfall table I ever made. This is the completed project. I'm going to show you all angles and give you some close-ups right now, but I think the project came out really well. Um, you can see the, uh, you know, doing the the field and everything like that. I'll give you an example. This section here, this is this is all no problem. the The whole job is how you do your joints and how well. Uh, your joints look and everything like that. And here you go, looking at your joints here. Look at how nice those those uh, cuts are, those router marks are. There's that's a little. There's a little. I can see a little bit of glue residue there. And I tried to use a greeny pad with some uh, paint thinner. Maybe acetone would be a little bit better to clean this up with. But uh, that's really not bad. This that's because I'm I'm zooming in with the 40 to 1 zoom come back here it's like you don't even you can't even see it I actually had a hard time seeing it when I was up there I could continue cleaning this out but oh there's that uh, joint there like I told you I got it pretty damn good but uh, it's a little off only because I had to cut it to fit rather than router it in but hey what do you guys think let me know in the comments Please let me know in the comments what you think of this table. I just took my greeny pad there and went around that corner that had that residue. Look at that. It's like, you know, it's fine. Okay, that's going to wrap up this episode of Ken Training. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please click on like. I could use that. It helps the algorithms. Leave some comments about what you think of my project. And is it if you have not familiar if you're not familiar with laminate, will this entice you to now tackle your own projects? Um, if you want to uh, subscribe to my channel, please subscribe. I'm going to, I'm doing more laminate videos. I'm going to be doing one video or a couple videos where I'm putting on this uh, bull nose uh, type of an edge on some of my pieces. Um, and that's it. I will uh, catch you on the flip side.